visiting today. It is an honor to have you here. We are so glad to be together. I'm like Rusty. There is no place I would rather be today than right here with you. Let's get our Bibles out and see if we can remember what we usually say. And if we don't, I'll put it in next week. All right. This is my Bible. It contains God's will for my life. I can become what it says I can become. Today, I will study from his word. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never again be the same. Amen. I want to ask the question this morning overall, why worship matters? You know, this, what we've been doing this morning is one of the great moments that we get to meet as a corporate body of people and sing together and pray together. Remember the Lord's sacrifice, his resurrection. What an opportunity that God has created for us. I want to look this morning at corporate music. We'll study another time and you surely know that this is not the only time or the only way we worship God. But this is a special time in which we, we do it together. The word worship comes from an old Anglo-Saxon word, worth-ship. We don't use that anymore. We say worship. But worship is a joyful giving of reverence to God. It is honoring God. It is respecting God. And extremely significant in our society today, we acknowledge that God exists. This is what the world promotes for the most. It's like just mush it all together. Or the, the saying that, you know, all roads lead to the same place. I, I don't know who said that, and I don't mean this in a, in, a, in a bad way, but that's about the dumbest thing I've ever heard. If you go out here and get on 99 North in the South and you get on 99 North, I'm going to promise you, you're not going to wind up at the same place. All people don't teach about Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. In fact, the vast majority of the American society hope and pray that this isn't true. They don't want there to be a Christ. They don't want there to be an empty cross. They don't want there to be a resurrection. And they don't want to be responsible to anyone. In our course of worship experience, we also confess his name. We've been doing that all morning. We bow before him. I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember, but you remember when People used to, they would get up to lead a prayer and they would turn around in their seats and they would get down on their knees. And I'm not suggesting to you that that makes one bow before God more. But it was an attitude of people that said, I'm going to submit. I want to prostrate myself. And we can do that every day, but especially like this in a corporate worship. We celebrate God. For who he is, I am always in awe of God, but never like I am in the nighttime when I look up into the sky. It is absolutely stunning. The new images that are beginning to come back from the replacement of the Hubble telescope and other things are amazing, and we don't even touch but a fraction of that. So we honor God for who he is, for what he's done, for what he's doing, for what, he, what he'll do. He continually redeems people from their sin. Webster defines worship as to perform a religious ceremony publicly. Poor Webster. 
I mean, I, I, I suppose it could just be a ceremony. You could just pop in and pop out. But our time together is far deeper and more important than just a religious ceremony. We, this morning, gathered and remembered. You know, it still amazes me that God loves us. But he loved us enough to die for us. And then the most significant event in all of history is the empty tomb. I want to do something I haven't done, and I don't know forever, maybe. I want to look at this verse. I want to plow this verse a little bit this morning deeper. I, there's only about five or six verses in the whole New Testament about worship, but this one this morning caught my attention. And as I think about our worshiping together, I want us to look at this, all right? We're going to break it down. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. I just thought it was interesting. You might see Hologos 2 Christu right under those word for word. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. If Christ's word is not dwelling in you, you and I will not be able to finish the rest of what we can do in that verse. Number two, let the, Christ, let the word of Christ dwell. Another, another place sometimes is translated in, in habit. The word of Christ is not coming in me for just a moment and then leaving. The word is Christ is coming to inhabit my mind. I need that so much, and I'll explain more later. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The word there is filled to the brim. If you see a lady that's about to give birth, she will tell you she's filled to the brim. And if you're going to be coy and say, is there room in there for another one? You better be standing at arm's length because she may be pregnant and slow, but she can reach. Let the word of Christ dwell in you, fill to the top. You say, I'm not there. No, but you can get there. We don't do any of this stuff instantly. And then singing songs with gratitude. The Greek word charis translated thankfulness, even praise. Now let's look at it. We're told to have the word of Christ, the knowledge to inhabit our mind crammed full, gratitude and thankfulness. When am I at my best? When all of those things are in my life. So I asked this morning why singing matters. Worship music, making a melody in your heart to God is basically the bottom line of what we do corporately. But if you are paying attention when the verses were read, we just went from one end to the other with there's some good stuff in between. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another. So in the process of our singing together to each other, we edify. What in the world does the word edify mean? Each of us should please his neighbor for his good. I want to read that again. Each of us should please his neighbor for his good, not for my good, but for his good, to build him up. That's the word edify. I was amazed at how many of these rusty were in there, and I just grabbed two or three. One of these times, I'm going to just copy them all down, and we'll look at all of them. But here's another one. Everything is permissible, Paul said, but not everything is beneficial. You can eat any meat you want. You can do it whatever day you want. But he said, even though I can do that, not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. Nobody should seek his own good, but the edification of others. That's tough, isn't it, church? Hello? Is that not tough for you? Okay, wake up. 
So it is with you, since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, try to excel in the gifts that edify the church. Wow. What shall we say then, brothers, when we come together? Every one of you has a hymn, a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue or interpretation. All of these must be done for the strengthening, for the edification of the church. When we've been singing this morning, we've been edifying each other. I hope you were trying to edify me. So what does that if I mean to improve spiritually? If, if, if someone is being edified, it is the process of drawing that person closer in a relationship with Christ. On this occasion, when we're together like this, this is what God desires. God is here to have fellowship with us as we take the spiritual journey in life from the natural to the supernatural and when we worship individually and collectively. So singing ultimately is about our heart being connected to God. All right, if there's no connection, there's no worshiping. And I must worship. Sing this song with me. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. What were you thinking about? What were you concentrating on? Were you like, I don't know if I remember the words or do I have all the notes right? What is God saying in that song? Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. This is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations will uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Almighty is with us. God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow, shatters the spear. He burns the shields of fire. Be still and know that I am God, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. When your life is in chaos, when as he describes here, as if the mountains were tossed into the sea and they were just being churned around, when your life is at its very bottom, when you just feel like you cannot go on, Take a breath. Be still and know that there's a God and that God is on his throne. The psalm speaks of someone living or having lived during a time of war. All right, they've 
They know what it is. Their life is chaotic. What is it that God can do? Well, make war cease, break the bow, shatter the spear, set the shields on fire. What are you going to fight with? Nothing. Guess what happened? The war ceased. You know what the people in Ukraine want more than anything else? No, it's not victory. They want peace. Be still. Take a moment to stop. And know that I'm God. Sing this one with me. Sing it. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord who strengthens thee. I am the Lord that strengthens thee. I am the Lord that strengthens thee. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Keep silence. Keep silence. Keep silence before him. What does it mean to keep silence before God? Does that mean to be quiet in here? Habakkuk, 7th century prophet had to do his work at a very difficult time in the nation of Judah. Ten northern tribes are already in captivity. They're gone forever. They're never, never coming back. God has brought these people out of slavery and bondage. He's brought them into the promised land, and he has said, what I want from you is I want you to love me as a God and the only God. They weren't very good at following instructions. So God said, I'm going to send the nation of Babylon, the mightiest power in the world. I'm going to send them down to you. And they, they, they came. They destroyed the city of Jerusalem. They burned the holy place. And the people wound up going to a bondage greater than the one they left in Egypt. But this psalm says, regardless of your actions as the people of Judah, I'm God. I'm still in control. I will punish you. But 40 years later, I'll restore you if you Repent. So what the Lord in his holy temple means? The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Keep silent, keep silence, keep silence 
before him. If you and I were standing in the throne room of a king, we were chatting on whatever, and suddenly the king comes in the door, and everything stops. Every eye is on the king. So if I'm going to get any help, I need to stop and remember that the king is on his throne. Do I need to hear this today? Is this important? We live in a nation that's gone crazy. I've known this now for a few weeks. It's, it's hard for me to even mouth the words. Young men are being castrated. Young women, 14, 15 years old, are having their breasts removed. Not because of a disease, but because of a spiritual sickness. I saw in yesterday's paper. Law school at the UCLA is keeping track of everyone who is against wokeness. You see, Satan is determined to destroy. Not only is it wrong as far as God is concerned, but it's even wrong by the laws of the land. You don't mutilate anyone, but especially children. I needed to hear Larry tell me this week, keep the faith. When I read stuff like this, it gets inside of me and I want to do something. What I need to do is, yes, it's important and I, I need to share it. But more than anything, I need to stop and take a breath. And remember that God is on the throne. God is on the throne. He is the very same place. That he was when he allowed men to do horrible things to his son. The Lord is in his holy temple. But we're going to make a little shift in the temple because God is there. Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father. He is there, but he's also here. But he's here in a very unique way. Listen to this. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Holy Spirit, God's Spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is sacred. And you are that temple. Every time a baby is suctioned from a womb, every time that life is snuffed out, God in his throne room notices. And our American world some hope that he doesn't exist. But more, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you receive from God? You're not your own. You were bought at a price. Oh, and what the price was. Therefore, honor God with your body. That's what we've been to in church. As Dale's been leading us in song, we've been honoring God. Is it possible that we don't get as much out of worship as we wished? Is it possible that we don't really expect God to be here among us? When you came this morning, did you come expecting with, with the realization that, you know, I'm, I'm going to meet corporately with my brothers and, and 
God is going to be among us. Do you believe that? I hope you believe that. God desires. <laughs> I don't understand it. But thank God for it. God desires to be in the midst of our musical praise. We sing and worship. It's a, it's a sweet sacrifice of praise, a sweet fragrance. God has been going around this morning going, You say, but, but Jerry, you, you don't know how I sound. You don't, you don't know what it's like. I, I can't sing. God wants you to sing. God wants you to sing. Do you think he's looking at the notes that you missed? Do you think he's, the words you got twisted or your tongue didn't work right? If that's what you think, then you have a terrible misunderstanding of God. God comes in our midst because he wants to be here with us. Singing is our praise, our adoration, our gratitude in his holy temple. Church, we must worship. I say this not to brag, but a couple weeks ago when, when Nick was preaching, I was leading singing. And, and I changed up a song a little bit. It was different. And I was just singing along. And suddenly I looked down at the monitor and it was, and I felt bad. Because I destroyed that moment of worship for you. When I was trying to worship, I didn't really care. I didn't want to look at the monitor. I didn't really care so much what was there. What I wanted to do was connect with the heart of God. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, God loves you and he wants you to be able to adore and praise him. You need prayers for the, from the church for whatever. If you need a church home, a place to be active, we'll love you. We'll honor you. We're going to sing a song. It's our tradition of invitation. If we can serve you while we stand and sing.